If you've been playing Baldur's Gate at all since launch, you've probably seen some lovely, gorgeous, jaw-dropping pictures like this that floating around on Twitter and then Reddit and the internet. And this is all thanks to Otis and his lovely camera tool. So today I'm going to take you through the installation of all the things that you will need and we will set up your first shot and you can be on your merry way and continue on your virtual photography adventure. So first things first, uh, you, what you're going to need about four different tools for this whole thing to work. Um, the first thing is reshade. Uh, you can use reshade uh, 5.9 or above. Um, I'm sure there's an update by the time you, this video goes live. Um, you will also need the IGCS connector tool, which you can get on GitHub. And the link to all these things that I'll be talking about will be in the description below. Um, so yeah, you get the IGCS uh, connector tool. There's an add-on for reshade. You'll need another uh, add-on as well, uh, shader toggler. We'll talk about that uh, a bit later. And you will definitely need the camera tool itself, which you can get from, like I said, the Patreon page and you just get $6 and you get access to that. So for installation, we're gonna begin with Reshade and you're gonna just download Reshade from the, the link in the description. And when you start it up the installation, it's gonna search for the games on your computer. And it might take a bit of time depending on your PC, but you know, you can always manually search for it. And mine is already pointing at Baldur's Gate 3 DX11. Okay, so you can just press next and then it's gonna do a little bit of analyzing. All right, so here we get to choose our rendering API and we want to choose DirectX 11 and 12. I'm sh uh, I read in the documentation that you could use Vulkan, but it's got some problems. So I would avoid that uh, completely and just use uh, DX 11, 12 here. Click next. And then for you, it'll probably just prompt you to install and you can just follow the instructions that come up and reshade will be installed. How will we know the reshade installed? Well, if you go to the binaries folder uh, in your Baldur's Gate installation, so for Baldur's Gate 3, you look for bin and where there's the Baldur's Gate executable, you will find a whole bunch of reshade stuff that has been added here, um, as well as a folder for the shaders. And this location and this folder will be important for the next step. So what we want to do next is we want to extract our two add-ons, the IGCS connector and the shader toggler. So you can download these from GitHub. They're both available, link in the description. Let's go down there, download it. It's uh, very small. And once you've extracted them, <clears throat> and once you've extracted them, you'll get these two folders, uh, shader toggler, right? And the IGCS. So we'll go into shader toggler and we'll get this dot add-on 64. We'll copy that, go to the folder with our executable and just paste it in there. And mine is already there, so we'll just replace it. And then we'll go and do the same with the IGCS connector. Copy that and put it in the same folder. Replace this, okay. And then we're gonna copy these two folders, shaders and textures, and just copy those. And then we go in back in the same folder with the executable again, you find reshade, for, reshade shaders, click in there and you'll see shaders and textures. And we just wanna copy and paste our files in there, mine are already there. So we'll just, they'll just be added on. <laughs> right, so, okay. Uh, so now that that's good. And then after that, that's pretty much done. And then you obviously need the, the camera tool itself. Now we're just going to test the installation and make sure that the game and reshade are running correctly. We should see that immediately upon launch. So you'll see a, a banner come at the top of your screen here. Um, mine is loading and there we go reshade 5.91 so the home button will open up reshade but on your first launch it's probably going to take you through a tutorial so you just um, go through that but eventually you'll come to the screen where we've got uh, this window and a bunch of tabs now uh, you want to just be in home and you, if you scroll down I don't know if you'll have all of these but you have some presets already installed and you should also find um, our IGCS dip the field connector there and you should enable it. And also make sure that uh, you can drag and uh, click and drag it to reorder it, but you always want to make sure that it's at the bottom. It's the last thing that is going to be executed, right? And if we go to the add-ons tab, um, you'll see that you've got generic depth. We can close that with a little triangle for now, but we've got our connector and we've also got our shader toggler, which we'll go into details later. And the same with the IGCS connector, as you can see, camera data not available because we haven't opened the camera tool 
and we haven't even loaded up anything. So I think the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go up into the game and we're going to set up a shot and get the camera tools ready. The reason why we want the shader toggler is so that we can turn off uh, different aspects of the game, such as the environment or obstacles that we'll be getting in our way when we're taking our shots. I won't be going into any detail on it, but I'll have a link in the description where um, there's another video by Julio who uh, takes you through it and shows you exactly how to use it. So anyway, moving on. So one of the first things that we need to do as well is to make sure that when you start the when you start to use the camera tools that you turn off the depth of field settings in the game. I didn't do this at the beginning and it didn't look really nice and I was kind of underwhelmed. I thought I was doing something wrong and I was right. You need to turn off the depth of field settings because they result in a much less effective bokeh. So if you can see just like in here how it's just really kind of but this is what we are after here. So you need to turn off the depth of field setting inside your in the, in the post process tab under video and then you're good to go. So here I am in the other dock. I have posed my characters nicely on the hilltop there. And first thing we need to do is to activate our camera, our camera tool. All right, so we just inject the DLL. Everything is closed off there. And we get nice dialog boxes telling us everything that has just occurred. So now we have a camera tool that we can use in the game. So just quickly to go through these uh, settings, um, hot sampling allows you to scale up your image. So whenever you, you are about to take your um, your image, you can scale it up to 4K or whatever resolution you feel like, to be honest, and take it at that picture and have your window rendered at that um, resolution for a brief moment in order to take the picture and then you go back down again. So that's a very useful tool. Um, there'll be instructions on that in, 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 later on. Okay. Configuration camera control. Um, here you find controls that will slow down or increase, slow down the speed of your camera or increase the speed of your camera in whatever direction, whether you're moving forward, backwards, left, right, rotating. And there's all, a whole bunch of other stuff on the, on the right here. Could talk about talking about shake and rotation. That's really cool stuff that you could use if you're actually creating a video. Um, and below all of that is the camera control device. I've got to set a gamepad, but you can use a keyboard and mouse or both at the same time if you feel like it. Um, I'm not too, I'm not too keen on the keyboard and mouse controls because the first time that I turn them on, they turn out very wonky. <laughs> if, I, if I do this, if I show you like this, you'll kind of see if I turn on the camera. It's, 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 it was much faster than this before, um, but we don't have to worry about that because that's why we have these controls here. These will allow us to control how fast the, the, the camera moves. So if you get kind of uh, surprised by that, this is where you should go to um, to slow it down, to, to control the camera movement. And image adjustments, yeah, not too, I'm not playing with these anything. I'm not playing with any of these yet. Key bindings are, yes, very important for what we're about to do. So we need to uh, just take a note of some of the keys that we'll be using very shortly. So enable, disable camera, um, increasing and decreasing FOV, resetting FOV, and moving our camera up, right, left. Right. And so that's all pretty much on the deep, uh, on the numpad and the, uh, the arrow keys on the right hand side of the keyboard. Um, we also want to know how to toggle our HUD. Uh, we can just press delete for that and how to pause the game. We can press numpad zero for that. And you can see here on gamepad bindings, you can find the bindings on the gamepad as well. And then there's a theme. You can use whatever theme you like and log a help page and about. Okay, so now we want to activate our camera. So uh, the default shortcut is insert and our camera is now at off. Oh, Goodness. All right. Our camera is activated. As you can see, I forgot to change my control device back to gamepad only. Uh, that's the way I like it. And now we have control of the camera, which is fantastic. Um, and I'm sure a few of you are saying, oh, what about the HUD? Yes, there's a shortcut for that too. We just press delete and our HUD is gone. So we've got a clean frame from which to compose our images. So I'm just going to Pull close here to tab and try and get a shot where everyone is kind of in frame. That'll be like a cool opening shot for the new game. Just like, meow. you can slow it down and have it, you know, kind of come up and reveal your tab. So we've kind of found a place where we want to take a screenshot. So I think here's good. So we can pause the game, numpad zero, and our game is paused. Superb. So what we want to need to do now, our shot is composed. We could take a screenshot like this and it's Still looks pretty good, but I think we can do better. 
So we open up Reshade, press Home, and we're going to go to the Add-ons tab. And under the Add-ons tab, we're going to go to the IGCS connector, and we're going to start a depth of field session under depth of field control. So if you click this button, and whoa, things are kind of looking a bit weird, and the controls, the Looks a bit intimidating, but it's not. I'm going to guide you through it, no problem at all. So max broker size is going to influence how big or small the actual broker itself is. So you can think of it like a, a broker scale. So a smaller size will have a really, really small broker and the bigger size will have a, a much larger broker. I think for this particular scene, I think I would like a broker of maybe Let's see if I can see some of the stuff in the background. Maybe about 15, I think, would be good. And then our next option is focus delta. That's going to help us to choose what we are going to focus on in the particular scene. So here, we also have a magnifier that will help us to magnify any particular part. So, for example, I want to make sure that um, the bridge of her nose is kind of in, in focus because I want both of her eyes. So if you move the magnifier over to that location using the sliders and we can actually increase its size so we can see both of her eyes at the same time. And just yeah. And then we can play with our focus delta until we get a result. So what's gonna happen is that because our book size is, because of our book size and because of the angle of the shot, she parts of her face are gonna be a little bit out of focus. So we need to choose. So I choose the right hand side where we've got the, the, the right eye there around here. So I'm using this little highlight here to kind of line it up, knowing that, okay, once they line up, it's perfect. So you will also see this once you get used to it, that once the, all the highlights are in are in line, your the characters here kind of like shines. Um, so if I show you, for example, like here. Um, so since this is in kind of in focus, maybe that's not particularly true, but I can tell almost, and bang, you see, I can see the highlight just get a little bit brighter, so I know. So you can kind of eyeball it, but that comes with time. And then we can turn, that's just the magnifier, that is very useful for choosing what to focus on. You can also, you don't have to focus on this, you could also focus on subject in the background, like for example, Lazelle. So she's kind of in focus now. Um, maybe we want to focus on Asteria, and maybe we can just, and now he's the one who's kind of in focus and sharp. So you can choose what you want to focus on in any particular scene. So for us, we're just going to use TAF. And I think that's good. And now we come up to our bokeh setup. Now the aperture shape is going to decide what shape your bokeh is going to take. So the aperture shape bokeh is more shaped more like a the aperture you'd find in the real world camera. And the circular bokeh is just a circle. It comes down to preference or whatever you know just choose what you think looks nice um i choose aperture because i kind of work with cameras almost on a daily basis so it's natural for me but you can also uh, for the aperture shape you could also change the number of vertices and you could even have a triangle shape poker you can have a pentagon you could have square um whatever you like up to about 16 sides and but i think that's not just circle so and we do have circular bokeh for that specifically so i'm just going to go aperture shaped and the quality will the quality settings determine how um how how clean your bokeh comes out if i may say so so if i was to render this uh, on a quality setting of five right so i'm just going to crank up some of the settings so that we can just so just for illustration purposes so i'm going to increase the bokeh so you're going to see what happens when the bokeh is too big and the quality setting is too low. So if we just start a render, you can kind of see how it's drawn the, the, you see how it's drawn the bokeh itself. It's kind of weird. And because the bokeh is so big, it's, 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 it's blurriness is bleeding and overlapping into places where we don't want it to be. So we can kind of dial that down. So that was just a little illustration. So if I take this quality up to about 15, right? And we keep the size. You can see how it's just taking a bit longer, but the quality of the blur, the quality of the worker has increased. But conversely, it takes a bit longer. Uh, you might be wondering, there is a toggle in the settings that allows you to have your render bar here. Um, oh, I like this shot. I might as well save it before we do anything. But that allows you to have the, the, the progress bar here. By default, it'll be up here. So I'll just change that back so we can all have a look at that. Um, so show progress bar is over there. So now 
a progress bar. By default, it's here, so the progress bar will come up here. But if you want it to be in the reshade menu, you can just uncheck that. So as you can see, the max bokeh size is a bit too much. Even though the quality setting was good, the bokeh was just a bit too pronounced. So we can drag that back. Let's take it down to about 10, which I think is a good size. And hopefully when we render this time, we don't get too much of that. And yeah, so it doesn't look as, um, it's not as aggressive as it was before. And you can start to see some of the bokeh shapes taking shape here at the back and along the fire and there come the highlights and that is just that looks good so you can see we're already starting to get some results from what we're doing here it actually looks pretty good so every time you start a session you and you want to return to gameplay start session and you render you must end the session as well so anyway where were we quality so yeah so quality just affects the quality of the book so it, it has diminishing returns if you crank it up to like 50 uh, you can see it's going to take 8,925 um, passes or it's going to draw the book in 8,000, 8, almost 9,000 frames. That is going to take a while. And yeah, it's, it's going to look good. It's going to look very good, but that's going to take forever. And I would not recommend you stick around for that. Let's just make 20 is good. It's a good place to start. And then I think once you start experimenting, you get a feel for what works best for you so i'm going to use 15 for quality and the number of vertices is seven yeah okay i think that's all right and then under that we've got rounding factor so this is an aperture specific setting um it controls how rounded the edges of your squarely shaped aperture become so you can make it more circular it almost becomes a circle but you could round the corners a little bit in order to kind of give it a different shape and then rotation angle just controls what angle you want your thing to be pointing which is very useful if you're using a much lower amount of vertices like if you're using four or five or six even you can have the you can make sure that the uh, rotation there's always one pointing straight up or you want it at a specific angle or you want it like this or anything that you decide and then ring angle offset kind of like twists and turns the inside of the of the bokeh and then anamorphic will kind of mimic an anamorphic lens and squish your bokeh into kind of more of a vertical ellipse so if we render that out you kind of get a sense of what that looks like it's just okay uh, i wouldn't use it uh, all the time uh, it's got, probably got its own uses um, so in the session and so if you turn that back to zero and then spherical aberration so i'm going to turn up the quality momentarily in order to showcase what this does so I'm sure you saw in the previous shots how our book I kind of had this halo highlight here. This is what spherical aberration controls. So here we've got a control that kind of controls how big it is or kind of we can scale it up and down. So it's will result in a thick halo around the book and result in a thinner one. And then this is, think of this as opacity. It'll control how transparent the book is or how much color is inside. And it all starts with kind of like a ramp and peaks at the edge of where our previous setting was dictating so you can kind of see it so if it kind of starts off really blurred like a radial blur or a radio opacity something that kind of spreads out and then it hits the edges of the thing of the where we're, of the board i don't know what to call it to be honest god damn and then we come to inner and outer ring rendering uh i've had kind of weird results with this one um i Inner, inner, I've used most, mostly inner rendering, but I think outer rendering, inner and outer rendering have different processing, so it kind of results in a different kind of image. I'm not sure, but just experiment because it kind of gives random, it gives interesting results. Like for example, all right, if I render in in that outer ring, let's turn the quality down, put it on 10. Inner ring is just is pretty normal. It starts from the center and it works its way out. See to the outside right inner to outer correct and then but if we do outer to inner ring if we change it um it doesn't it doesn't change immediately you have to kind of cancel the render and then when you change it the second time and then it'll start on the outer and work its way in i feel like the outer to the outer to inner gives a much brighter image for some reason i'm not sure why exactly uh, i'll save that though i like that uh, so if we 
So that, that's what that does. So you can choose, you can let it do random or you can choose what you want it to do. But just take a note that right now it's kind of a bit finicky. You have to kind of, when you're changing it, you have to start a rate and cancel and then start again. Um, highlight and boost factor will control how the highlights of this broker um, will come out. So play with these and see what settings are. I have no recommends the settings for this because I'm still kind of, and just enjoying the randomness of what it's creating and some of the <laughs> hideous images of I've got stored in my hard drive. But yeah, so that's pretty much it for um, setting up your focus. And yeah, so just take advantage of everything that you've got in your hands and yeah, just have fun with it. And when you're done, like you start to render, let's say we want to keep this. All right, so it's going to render and you would want, you'd think that, yeah, this is great. I could take this, this is lovely, right? Um, I like to use the reshade uh, screenshot tool, which you can find configure in the settings, next to add-ons, settings. And if you go down, you can close general screenshot, you can set your screenshot key and the screenshot location, right? I suggest changing these because by default, they are set to save inside your uh, binaries folder where there's all the reshade stuff. So just change that, otherwise that folder is just going to get crowded very, very quickly. And another reason to take the screenshots with Reshade is that GeForce Experience will also take the overlay, which we do not want to do, um, right? Like this, we'll probably show, I'll show this shot later. It takes the overlay as well, and we don't want that. And the screen, the, the, the Reshade screenshot manager, um, also works well with the hot sampling. So for example, I'll just do a quick hot sample uh, tutorial. So what hot sampling pretty much allows us to do is to create a 4K image of this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna Alt-Tab. Uh, we've just paused the game and chosen our shot. So we're gonna go into here and we're gonna choose a resolution. Make a note of your current resolution so you can switch it back later. Um, but mine is already there in the uh, res recent resolutions. But anyway, I wanna get this to about 4K image. So choose that and choose set, right? Then we can start our depth of field session. So now that our session is up, we can pretty much, I know the kind of things that I've already, I've already taken this picture at a smaller resolution. So uh, my settings are already dialed in and we start to render and it's going to do its thing. And naturally it's rendering more pixels. So it's gonna be much heavier on your machine. So expect some fans to spin up and make some noise and then once that's rendered we can take the picture we can go back to our previous resolution and just you know end the session if it goes black and boom we're back to our normal resolution and if we check our delete that and if we check our images we have our nice 4k where is the information there we go we have a nice 4K image of our tab. It's absolutely gorgeous. As you can see, it's just, mm, she looks good. I like that. Good luck taking your pictures. Oh, and before you go, how to get out of this, just a home and put everything back and pause the game and deactivate the camera. And then sometimes this is gonna happen, but just press home again and boom, we are back in the game and ready to continue adventuring. Actually, you know what? Just for the sake, just for the funsies, I'm going to oh, look at him polishing his blade there. What a numpty. Um, <laughs> Tides of chaos. I am slowed. Fantastic. Enjoy your day.